I'm standing with Jim from the Regional Water Providers Consortium. And, you know, Jim, one of the things we, we like to do on Garden Time is really talk about the entire garden. And a big portion of gardening is the way we use water. Mm -hmm. And you guys do a great job of, of educating us, but we're going to take it a little step further today and talk about it's, let me get it right, evotranspiration, E-T, right? Evapotranspiration. Evapo, I was yes. so close. Now tell me what that is. <laughs> Evapotranspiration, uh, plants, much like us, we sweat. Sure. Plants sweat also, and that's called transpiration. So they're losing water. Uh, that's what leads them to wilt and die if they uh -huh. lose too much water. The soil can also evaporate, or does evaporate yeah. water uh, as the sun hits it and wind conditions uh, happen. So the combination of water being lost through the plants sweating out water and the soil evaporating the water is evapotranspiration. And I think so many times we, we think about the sun, we think about heat, but we forget the wind aspect, which really can just, it devastates plants if it's really windy and then you add heat, it can take a lot of moisture from them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let, let's talk a little bit then about what, what, what different things need, because a lawn needs a different amount than let's say a tree or a shrub or any of that stuff. And you've got some ways to measure water that I think is really smart and give us a baseline of how long it takes to get certain amounts of water in our garden. Mm -hmm. What is this little golden cup here? This little golden cup uh, is a quick and easy way to figure out uh, what we like to talk about is watering in inches of water per week. Yeah. And so when you're setting a irrigation schedule for your lawn or for your plants, uh, doing it in inches is a good way to do it. And what we recommend is on average, a typical lawn here in our area needs about one inch of water per week. Okay. And so that doesn't mean a lot to most people uh, until you grab something like this cup, you'll put it out in the lawn, set your timer, run your individual sprinkler, because all sprinklers are different. It could be different pressure at your house. It yeah. could be a different hose type. Uh, so you could be running a dishwasher or a, a, a washing machine too, and that could change the pressure. Exactly. So all these factors can change it. Uh, so put this out in your lawn, turn your sprinkler on, time how long it takes to fill up to the one inch mark. When it gets to that one inch mark, let's say it's 60 minutes. Yeah. That would be 60 minutes per week that you would need to run that sprinkler to get your average watering schedule of one inch per week. And does that mean that it is one, like you don't have to do it all at one time. Can you spread it out or does it need to be an hour a week or can you do like two 30 minute sections a week? Exactly, okay. yeah. So, you know, if you ran on most lawns, if you ran it for an hour, you'd probably just have runoff and you're not getting that yeah. water to go down deep to the root zone where you want it. So break that 60 minutes up into Probably like two days a week is going to be good. Maybe in the summer you might want to run three days a week. Yeah. But typically twice a week at 30 minutes would get you get your one inch per week. Well, now you have an example here. And we'll, let's go down here and look at this. You're going to show us, because visuals mean so much more, <laughs> what evotranspiration means. And, and give us an example here. Explain what you're going to do. Okay. So we were talking about evapotranspiration as the plants are losing water through sweating and the soil is losing water through evaporation. Yeah. And so these jars are kind of a good model. Basically, this is what you're doing when you irrigate in your landscape. So we kind of think of our landscape as a big bucket or a jar. Okay. And so this is our landscape. There's water in the soil and in the plants. Every week, due to weather conditions, we're losing water to the atmosphere. Okay. And so we've lost water. And every week when you're irrigating or you're using your sprinkler system, the goal, ideally, is to put back the water that was lost. Okay. And that's, that's typically what you want to do. What's going to happen in most cases where people are overwatering is this is the sprinkler system and they're just oh. putting extra water through the landscape that doesn't need to be there. Okay. It's just wasting it. It's just wasting water. And, and the whole thing with, with knowing how much water you use, what your pressure is, what the plants require, you can find all that out by going to a website, can't you, if you live in the Portland, Vancouver area? Yeah, so um, you know, once you've went through and you found out how long your sprinkler takes to get one inch of water per uh -huh. week, go to our website at conserveh2o.org. Every Thursday, we post a weekly watering number, and that weekly watering number changes as the weather changes. So it may be more one week when it's hot and less yeah. you know, during the spring and the fall. Sure. Uh, at that uh, website, you'll get that number and you can use that to program or set your watering schedule so that you're not overwatering. So just another great tool to help maintain your gardens. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we, we, we love gardens, obviously. We're garden time, but we want you to get the best use of, of the water that is here because we love the Northwest. We want it to be green, but we want to use it wisely. So for more information, go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website and you can start making your garden beautiful this summer. Thank you so much, Jim. Thanks.